given everything that's happening in this world, the wealth, the technology, can we not take that stress in terms of survival off the backs of people? What does it mean if everybody has decent health care? Can we do that? Yeah, we can. What happens if we move toward a situation where workers have more control over the work that they do? Hmm. Interestingly enough, there was just a study, I don't know if you saw it, that came out of the UK, I think it was last week, and what it said, a number of companies experimented with a four-day work week. Yeah. And the results were really quite strong. Uh, workers felt great about it. They became more productive. The quality of their lives improved. Their stress level went down. Companies felt good about it. Those companies are going to continue it. As technology develops, should we not be thinking about a 30, 32-hour work week for workers? But how do we do it? Like, my, my brain, I was racking my brains. Again, this is a first thought idea, but I don't know if you've ever seen Darren Brown, but <laughs> the face says no, but he's, he's sort of a, a trickster. He's like a hypnotherapist. <laughs> do we get Darren Brown in front of some of these guys and... No. No, okay. <laughs> Just an idea. Look, but how do we, I guess, I, I'm... You know, what underlies everything that I believe is we share a common humanity, no matter where we live, what country we live in, what color our skin is, what our sexual orientation, whether we're men or women. I think there's a common understanding of what a good life is about. And we have got to bring our people together to stand up and say, this world belongs to all of us and not just a few. And, and what worries me so much is the people on top, they're powerful not just in the United States, they got their pals in Saudi Arabia, and they got their friends in China. And you got this oligarchy all over the world with incredible wealth and incredible power, in Russia as well, of course. And our job is to organize, to have a vision of a society which works well for all. But it's not gonna be a hypnotherapist that does it. It's gonna be, <laughs> it is gonna be difficult. I mean, you know, in your country and my country, people have fought and died for human rights, whether it's women's rights, workers' rights, whatever it may be. And that's the struggle that we have got to undertake. Mm. You seem to have a degree of hope, and I'm amazed by that, given that you're at the, the coal face of misery. <laughs> Because America is like Gotham with no Batman. And I think specifically of someone like L LA. I think LA is a really good example of the mad juxtaposition in America, where you have hotels for dogs and, and homeless people. You've got 30,000 homeless people yeah. in LA alone. Yeah, like, and, and, you know, people who have jobs, but they can't afford a house, so they live in tents as a family. And you see this, you'll travel around LA, and it's mind blowing to me, like in this, you know, in such a wealthy part of America, and it just feels like the left, I think the world over has to take a degree of responsibility. They've taken their, their eye off the ball because they're getting weighed down in sometimes kind of inconsequential shit when there's real stuff going on because they're worried about the blowback if they don't talk about this tiny issue. Yes. And, I, and I think like it's happened, you know, Brexit's a big thing over here. It didn't address, one of the reasons that Brexit happened is because a lot of people who are really struggling in this UK felt like they weren't being spoken to. Got it. You have a similar situation in the US where bizarrely, someone like Trump speaks for the working man. Like, that is totally bizarre. Yeah. Right. But, Here is a billionaire crook yeah. who is now defined as a champion of the working class. This is what I mean. So how, how has that happened? Because they haven't been spoken to. You got it. Look, look. what you have is a situation where basically people are hopeless. They've lost their jobs. They don't have much hope for the future. They're looking at a situation where everything being worse. Their kids are going to be even worse off than they do. And what do they do? What do they do on that? They turned to drugs. We lost over 100,000 people to, to overdoses last year alone. 
They turn to alcohol, serious problem, they even turn to suicide. All right. And this is a rampant issue throughout the country. So what our job is to give people hope by having government no longer ignore their needs. This, you're, you're right about Brexit. And it's the same thing with Trumpism, pretty much the same phenomenon. If you're going through all of that pain and you don't see anything on TV, you don't hear any of the politicians even talking about your reality, they're busy raising money at some fancy cocktail party, you say, screw it, what do I, why do I believe in democracy? Government is all full of shit, it's not my life. So I'm gonna come along and do a strong man like Trump. He's loud, pompous, maybe lies all the time, who cares, all right? And what we have gotta do is not only rebuild our economy to work for all, we've gotta restore faith in democracy. You gotta, those people out there who are hurting gotta know we are responding to their needs. We understand it, we're fighting for them, we're gonna deliver for them. You do that, Trumpism is dead. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I don't agree with you on. You don't say happy birthday to people. <laughs> Have you read about this? This monster won't say happy birthday to people. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. <laughs> but happy I'm, birthday I'm, when your birthday does come. That's okay. not how it works, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't send it in advance. <laughs> but but I'm what, not good at it. You're right, I admit it. <laughs> See what happens. You can't just take pot luck and just go. Hey, but why? one out of 360 odd <laughs> yeah, chance yeah. on the right, right? Um, it's like, yeah, it's like a really lovely no, version of Russian about, roulette. What that's about is when a birthday occurs in the Senate, you got zillions of these. There, oh, happy birthday, love you, you know. And, you know, that's fine. It's okay. But it's, it's part of the process, you know. So I'm not too much into that. So I, I, I admit to being a little bit rude in that respect. So, so is that just that your, your desire to make things better so visceral that you, you, you just can't get involved in backslapping? Yeah, I'm not much of a backslapper. I'm not wow. a small talker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that's about it. And, you know. All right, so to all of my colleagues in the U.S. Senate, no, 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 happy no. birthday! <laughs> Did I cover myself appropriately now? <laughs> now, I'll tell you what else. I mean, this is literally what goes on. People have their staff, not very hard, say to your staff, okay, look up the birthdays of every member. It's all published. And on that day, send them a card. All right, we don't do that. I plead guilty. So, there you go. Well, clearly, because you've got, uh, you've got other things to do. I meant, like, your, 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 your children. <laughs> <laughs> they're, well, just, they're just walking around going, Now, you're touching a very, my wife is out there. You're touching a very deep nerve here. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't mean I to will, put let's you Let's pass over that and get on to the crises facing general humanity. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's difficult not to want to go there. <laughs> Have you never said happy birthday to your, to your wife? Did, what about Valentine's? you do Valentine's? <laughs> Isn't it? See, this is the first time so you squirt. This, is, like this is what the internet does to you. Yeah. You read the article on the internet. I didn't. And I was wondering, I asked an obvious question, why isn't Valentine's Day on a Saturday or a Sunday? Why is it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday? Who can know that? You know, I don't know. Hard to me to imagine anyone would know that. I don't know. I didn't, so I plead guilty of that one too. All right. Sure. I love the fact that, that that's the only time you've looked flustered. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays you got about, me on yeah, the Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day. I <laughs> but isn't don't know that, what to say. But isn't that a really good example of focusing on the minutiae rather than the, the macro is that just kind of, yeah, he doesn't say happy birthday and Valentine's. And, and then if elected president, he <laughs> will eliminate <laughs> Valentine's Day. That's it. There are a couple of female whoops there. <laughs> and listen, I know the world's changed and all, but get fucked. Because I don't believe in Valentine's until it comes along and you don't get flowers. <laughs> Sorry, Senator. Um, um, 
I, I didn't realize I, I was sort of researching on you. And you were there when Martin Luther King did the I Have a Dream speech, weren't you? There were George Washington and Valley Forge. <laughs> uh, they don't know American history, I got it, all right. <laughs> no, yes, I was. Um, Dr. King, I was a student at the University of Chicago. We took a bus to Washington. I heard that speech and King was an extraordinary man more than the media often portrays. He was a very great American, uh, and, and you know, people should really understand and appreciate the extraordinary life that he lived. Yeah, and what does, what does the perfect world look like for you in, let's say, 40 years? Well, how many years? 40? 40. How old are you? You're 81. Well, look. Um, let's, do, let's do 20. Well, I would say one thing, uh, you know, I don't know about a, a perfect world in, okay. in 20 years. One thing that I think is clear and what has been so really unspeakable for me and, and really horrifying is, is the war in the Ukraine. And it's not just the horrible suffering that we're seeing in the Ukraine or the unnecessary deaths of tens and tens of thousands of young Russians. It is that at this moment, if we are going to combat climate change, the US can't do it alone, UK can't do it alone, China can't do it alone. This is the situation where either we sink or we swim. We're in it together. And Putin now dividing up the world because of this horrible invasion and the United States moving toward a Cold War with China, which worries me very, very much. So, the one thing we have got to do, and it ain't easy, is to figure out once again how we bring the world together to cut carbon emissions, to save the planet. If you think this COVID is the last pandemic we're gonna see, unfortunately, it's probably not right. We need to work together. China is doing some important work in that regard. We gotta figure out how we are prepared much more effectively for the next pandemic. Can we develop uh, nasal sprays which will keep people healthy, et cetera. So bringing the world together is enormously uh, important and dealing with this global oligarchy and having people all over the world stand up to this handful of billionaires who have so much power is clearly the direction I would like to see happening in the next 40 years. And that is the, um, exactly.